Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be talking about Hefter Linux. Now, for oh, quite a long time I used Arco Linux. It's a Arch-based distribution and it's awesome. And then I started having a little few problems with PyCom and I decided I needed to distrohop. So, after several failures on the Linux part of my machine, I decided to go to Manjaro and that's where I was for the last uh, three weeks or so. Uh, and it was an okay experience, but I've decided that I'm gonna I needed to distro hop again. And I've chosen Hefter Linux. And Hefter is a if I'm saying this right, I'm not, I have no clue if I'm actually saying saying it like saying it right. It's an, a spin-off of Arco. So I expected a very similar experience to what Arco is, only it's designed differently. So that's really the main thing is. But I was I've been kind of shocked at how many different things there actually are on uh, Hefter that the, the developer has gone through and created above beyond what Arco offers. So first, let's talk about what desktop environments and window managers they offer. So they offer BSPWM, which is what you're seeing on the screen here. They also offer GNOME, HLWM, which I'm not actually sure what that is. Maybe it's Herb's Loft. I'm not actually sure. Maybe it's something that I've never heard of. They also have Plasma and XFC. So really what you're getting when you install this is Arco but with a few pack quite a few packages changed and a different aesthetic so I did not record the installation of this because I was actually installing it on my machine but when you're when you install it you get a choice between the basic install or a, a advanced install and an advanced install would be more similar to what you would get with Arco where you get to go through and choose what packages are installed what kernel you use probably and all that stuff. I chose the basic install because I was very curious to see how it differed. And one thing you'll notice if you install this is that it has way less packages actually than what a normal stock Arco would you know, install in your system. You have about a thousand packages and that's pretty good uh, for a very well developed distribution. I've had some issues which I'll talk about later but let's first talk about my uh, positive experiences it's very pretty the install installer which is eventually Calamari's but they have a very nice welcome app where you get to choose between the basic and advanced installers there were some deficiencies like there was no easy way to update the mirrors and I'll talk about more about my mirrors experience here in a few minutes so there was no way to do that but and they did recommend you run gpard beforehand but that's pretty pretty much normal for a lot of arch based distributions once you get past the installer which was very very quick you log into something that looks like this and I will put a picture right here of the login screen which is fully custom I believe it's still light DM uh, but I might be wrong about that, but it's very custom. It does have a really weird setting where it, if you install another window manager, it always defaults to the window manager or desktop environment that came with Hefter. You have, so in other words, you have to change your session every single time you want to log into your other you know, window managers, and that's kind of annoying. So every time I want to go to DWM, which is where I'm going to spend most of my time, I act actually have to go through and select DWM every single time instead of actually, you know, remembering it like normal. In terms of applications, it's a little weird. So it does not come with Firefox installed. It comes with Brave. Some of the key bindings. So if I, let me actually show you this. So first, this is URXVT and it's apparently a URXVT that's not been patched like at all because for the life of me, I cannot figure out how to get it to zoom in. Uh, now I don't use URXVT like at all, so I'm assuming that maybe it is patched and I just don't know the key binding, but the normal ones don't work, so like Control Plus does not work, Control Shift Plus does not work, Control Shift Page Up doesn't work, Control Page Up doesn't work. Uh, I, I even try Control Y and Control U and stuff because sometimes they're, those, those uh, key bindings doesn't work. So I haven't actually gone through and changed it yet because I wanted to show you this. But it does use URXVT, which is an interesting choice, because Arco itself uses Termite, which, if you know me, you'll know that I think that Termite is a fantastic choice, because it's just the best terminal ever. Just my opinion. Uh, so let's actually, let me see, see um, so if I can do CD, I, we gotta remember, actually, what I think I'm going to do is close this and op open up 
open up termite. What the hell? I don't know what this is. We're going to close this. It does some weird things with the Rofi things too, as you just saw. For whatever reason, the main... So when, so when I typed in termite, the top thing here that came up was ad block. I'm not sure why that is. It doesn't do that on D the DWM version, or when I log into DWM, that doesn't happen. But for whatever reason, it does here. Um, not sure why. It's very weird. But anyways, this termite, I can actually zoom in. Let me just clear this out. Yeah, I'm going to have to deal with the fact that I'm in Bash and I've not gone through and installed ZSH yet, so just bear with me on that. Uh, and none of my aliases are here either, so I'm going to constantly just type in C to clear things and realize that my aliases aren't there, so I have to you know, either type in the whole thing or Control L. It's going to be a whole thing until I get my lazy ass to installing ZSH like I should. Anyways, uh, um, CD into dot config BSPWM. And then we will um, do an ls here, cd sxhkd, and vim into sxhkdrc. So some of the, like I said, some of the key bindings are weird. So uh, you can tell that this is a derivative of Arco by the fact that the comments are exactly the same as Arco, but they've actually just changed the applications to super left one, give you Brave. I've uninstalled Brave almost immediately. I don't care for Brave because it it's like a, a parasite. It takes over your entire system. You can't If you're going to use Brave, you have to have Brave be your only browser on your system because you'll never see the other ones ever again. Because even if you set those as default, Brave just decides to show up whenever you click on a link. It's annoying AF. Uh, I'm assuming code here is actually the actually Adam. I'm not sure. I don't know if Adam's actually... So if I do super F2 here, do I get Adam? No. Also, if I did Super F1 when I had Brave installed, it didn't work. I'm not sure why. Um, I have GIMP installed. Super F4, does that open up GIMP? No. So none of these actually work. That's one of the problems that I've experienced. Is none of these, at least at the top, actually go through and install. Now, normally what you say is that maybe the SXHKD daemon isn't working. That's possible. But if... You, some of these other ones, after you get past the super key ones, like uh, super H, that works, right? Weird, right? So some of these are working. So we know SXHKD is working, but some of the, the toggles aren't. So usually then what that would mean is that the applications aren't installed. But I know that GIMP is installed. So I, like I can do super shift D and do GIMP. Yeah, and GIMP will install. That was a weird splash screen for GIMP. I'm just saying that that's not the traditional splash screen, so that's weird. Um, yeah, so I don't know what's going on with that. Uh, these are some, just some of the problems that I've had, and it's the reason why I almost immediately went through and just installed DWM in my own dot .files and everything, and had not spent any time here in the BSPWM thing except for like the first hour or so where I was astonishingly confused over why some of the key bindings just didn't work. Now I haven't gone through like I wonder if Super R works. Yeah, Super R will work. So like it's weird. Like some of these work. But some of them don't work. It it doesn't really doesn't make sense. So one of the cool things I did notice is that this has scratch pads enabled. So if I do super D, which is usually Rofi or D menu for me and I believe that what is what it is on Arco you're supposed to get a, a scratch pad but of course that didn't work this time and and actually this time it just closed that completely out so I don't again the key binding thing is really weird it just they don't work so like super D is supposed to bring you a scratch pad and it did when I first installed so but now it's not I mean, it's because Super Q is supposed to be quit, not Super D. Okay, I'm not... We'll try to get back to BSPWM. See, it didn't actually quit it. It's just gone. 
We'll just uh, recover it, I guess. It's very weird. So, like, Super D is supposed to do this thing here, but it does not do it. It's very, very weird. I don't know if that's a, a Hefter thing or if maybe just BSPWM is going crazy. This was by far the weirdest experience I had with the whole thing. Other than that, it's been fairly good. Uh, the whole not remembering what session you were using beforehand with the light with the display manager or whatever that's weird but I can deal with that this right here would prevent me from using their BSPWM install it's just not I mean I think I probably will go through and just find my old BSPWM SXH KDRC file and use that instead and see if it'll work it's just really weird anyways I went through and installed DWM and just that's what I've been using in terms of application selection I, I, I guess I kind of glossed over that other than brave it's mostly meh now because I've installed a uh, window manager it's kind of hard to go through and see actually what's all installed on the computer I could go through and just you know scroll through this but a lot of the stuff like it doesn't have Firefox pre-installed I did that it does have pulse audio which is not Surprising because everything does it does have the Arco Linux tweak tool because this is Arco Linux. So it should work fine Better lock screen GUI. I'm guessing that's actually what is controlling the lock screen. I wonder if I open this up So this just does wallpapers I mean that's cool But fairly useless I mean because Changing wallpaper is not that hard uh, let's see here. It has variety installed, which I would probably uninstall if I continue to use this very often. Some of these, like, I don't know what this, of uh, uh, Avahi Zero Conf Browser. I'm sorry you can't see this guy. I can't make it bigger. Uh, I've actually, tr I made the Rofi thing a little bit wider, but the text needs to be bigger. Uh, Bluetooth Manager, which is just going to be Blue, Blue Man Manager, I believe. Uh, it did have Ranger installed out of the, out of the box. It has color fi picture picker. Uh, Discord is something I installed. Disk is is GNOME Discs. Fix hard coded icons. I don't know what that is. Uh, Gpart is here. Gsync, which is I believe is a GUI version for rsync. Again, an inter interesting uh, thing. Oh, here's that welcome app. This is the uh, so when after you've installed. This is something that Arco doesn't do. Actually, Arco may have an Arco, an Arco welcome app. I honestly don't remember. Hmm. I, I'm not going to say one way or the other. I think they do, now that I'm trying to remember. But it's been so long since I've installed Arco. Uh, so it's just a welcome page, and then you can go through in one-click applications. I did this with Firefox. It was so slow, and that's going to lead me to my the mirror... Don't let me forget to talk about the mirrors because I had a hard time with the mirrors. Um, it has a link to their social things uh, and some links to become patrons and their website and stuff. So it's an okay uh, welcome app. But it's like I said, installing the stuff is slow because the mirrors out of the box are wrong. So unless you're like specifically from wherever the this developer is, they're using his mirrors, and I believe they were the UK mirrors. So when I tried to go through and update the system, it was slow. It took like an hour and a half. I have good internet. Uh, so I had to actually go through and use Arc, Arch Linux um, mirror generator thing on their website to go through and generate the mirrors that I needed and change it in Pac, uh, the Pac-Man conf file on the system. And that's annoying. You know, that... If Arco has a button on their installer that says, you know, update mirrors. That's great. You know, that's the way it should be. Uh, and even before they had that, I believe they chose the mirrors based on your location, which is the way it should work. Now, it's possible that Hefter had that and I just didn't see it. It's possible because I did go through it quite fast. Uh, so maybe correct me if, the, if you've used this before and, you know, correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. Uh, but... The mirrors was a big I issue for me because, like I said, it was so slow. I, and it, it's just one of those things where you really don't want to have to deal with a thing. I mean, if I were installing regular Arch Linux, I'd have to deal with it. But 
I'm not installing regular Arch Linux. I'm installing something with a GUI installer, and it should just be that kind of thing should just be taken care of for you. Now, especially when, like I said, Arco has a button for it, and has had for probably a year now, at least. Um, so let's see if we can go through some more of these applications. We were in the H's. S F Hefter S D D M G U I. Yeah, that did not open up anything. Probably has something ringing around now in the background that I actually didn't want it to do. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on a second. That was just... So this just basically controls if you can if you auto-log in. I'd love it if I could go through and set it so that it's just, you know... Because it allows you to choose for the if you want to auto-log in, but it doesn't let you choose, you know, the default session, which is a little bit disappointing. I will say that the the wallpaper selection on Hefter is very good. These are, I mean, these are just a selection of them. Very good. Definitely better than Arco's, I think. They're more colorful. I mean, there's a couple here that are actually from Arco, I guess. Um, but some of these, I mean, just some of these are really, really good. I, I really do enjoy, like, this is the default one. I believe this is a conky. But I might be wrong about that. It's not a very useful conky. Like, with the, the conky in Arco tells you some of the stock key bindings. This one doesn't. I don't know if I do super shift question mark if I would get, nope. Sometimes that will give you like a cheat sheet. Maybe it's super, like super F1 is supposed to open up Brave, but that didn't work. All right, it doesn't matter. Scrolling back down. This is the one downside to not having a menu. You can actually go through this stuff very easily. Uh, LibreOffice was something that I installed. It did not come pre-installed. Uh, same with Caden Live. Mel is here. That's not surprising. Nemo is one that I installed. Neovim is one that I installed. Notion is one that I installed. Power Manager. That's going to be XFC Power, Power Manager, I'd, I'd bet. Um, I think that's what that is. I got to stop closing that. <laughs> I got to go scroll, scroll all the way back down. Qubit Torrent is here. The QT stuff is interesting because the, I wonder if that QT stuff came with Caden Live. I want to see a reason why that would be here, uh, you know, without installing Plasma. Ranger was here, bef um, I believe, by default. So the screenshot tool is one that I installed. Uh, I couldn't find the screenshot tool on here before when I was trying to take a screenshot earlier. So if there is one. I just don't know what it is. Thunar is the default file manager, which I'll probably uninstall. Todoist, I, ins I installed that. UrxVT is the default. Terminal, Vim, obviously. VLC was here, and Zim is the one that I installed. So that's all That's all the programs that were installed in the system. Plus, I mean, at least half of those are ones that are, are things that I installed, you know, after I've, you know, used it for a little while. So the last thing, I'll actually, before I switch over, let me show you this. The polybar thing here is... I don't know. It looked prettier in the screenshots on their website. You have this the CPU thing here, which I find uber 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 distracting. But for some reason, they have the file system module set to some weird drive on my system. I'm assuming it's like the Scarlet Auto, the, the Scarlet audio thing that I have has a little bit of memory in it, and it's always almost full because it's just it's not meant to be you know like storage. It's not sent to root. It's not set to the root drive, so it's very weird. Anyways. So Super 1 opens up GIMP. Super 2... That that was really weird. Did I mean, I hit Super 1 and GIMP showed up. Now I hit Super 1 in the... I'm so confused. Alright, anyways, it doesn't matter. As you can tell, the key bindings thing really bothered me. This it was so just some of them are so weird, and some of them just don't work at all. So I don't know why that is. I don't know if that's maybe it's just something weird on my system. It's completely possible. That it, it's okay because I'm not going to use BSPWM anyways. I'm going to use my DWM and and keep playing around with Xmonad, which is a video that I'm going to be doing here pretty soon. But overall, it's pretty good. Honestly, I mean, 
the BSPWM experience, not that great, but it's basically just Arco underneath the system. So I've just gone through and customized it to be the way I want it to be. Will I stay on Hefter or just go to Arco itself? That's an interesting question. I think it's going to depend on updates and stability. If if this is as, as stable as I found Arco to be, I'd probably just stay on this because, like I said, I've just customized this to be the way I want it to be, and it's just fine. But if it's not as stable for some reason, or if they you know introduce some weird theme updates or something, I don't know, then probably not. But it'll be interesting to see. I'll probably keep you updated because I'm sure I'll do a video in like two weeks or so saying, oh, I've distro hopped again because that's what Matt does. Matt distro hops all the time. Anyways, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Uh, you can also support the channel by subscribing to it, obviously. You can also uh, hit the little notification icon. If you want to support us monetarily, you can do so by going to patreon.com slash linuxcast. I would like to thank our patron. Devon C for being our very first patron and hopefully not the last. Anyways, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.